Once the stream has come on, this test will terminate. This is a test of the... Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, today's pre-stream chatter was me uh, saying that, like, doing a pretend test of the emergency broadcasting system, which no longer exists, by the way. It's, they, they do it totally differently now. Uh, but back when I was younger, we used, they used to test it by having, um, having uh, radio and television networks air this weird beeping sound. And I don't think we ever had a real one. We, there was always just a test. So, um, so what we're going to be doing today, uh, first of all, this is not what we're going to be doing right away. Uh, I do want to thank or unthank Miglobite, who is a wonderful person, to uh, somehow we got involved in discussing what are the cheapest calories uh, you can purchase. In other words, if you wanted, if you needed just food calories, uh, what's the cheapest uh, substance you could purchase to get the most calories per dollar? Uh, as it turns out, of course, you couldn't, I mean, not as it turns out, I mean, you couldn't obviously live on, on that because you do need uh, protein as well and you need a lot of other stuff. Protein does have calories, but, but you need protein outside of that to, to build pieces of yourself. Uh, you need nutrients and you probably need some other stuff. I'm guessing that if you just ate this uh, calorie dense, this calorie, cheap calorie material, you couldn't survive on it. I vaguely remember once looking into this and thinking it's some sort of edible wax. Uh, and it's burned into my brain enough now that I want to actually maybe look at it, though probably not today or ever. It'll just sort of dribble down this uh, file like everything else does. Um, and, and, you know, it'll never be revisited again uh, except when it is. Yeah, I said that. Okay, now yesterday it turns out, or yesterday the last time I streamed, it turns out uh, there was no audio because of some weirdness. Uh, that I don't still fully understand, but I think I have fixed. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and do a brief audio test now, uh, which means I'm basically going to unmute my stream, listen to myself, and hear some cool echoes, and then we will go back to doing stuff that is actually less useful than audio testing. I mean, you have to realize the value of everything I do is so low that, you know, you really can't find something that's lower value than what I actually do. But let's go ahead and run that, uh, run that test now. I sound pretty good. I sound pretty good. Um, 48, 49, the, at the tone, coordinated universal, uncoordinated me time, 12, 14. Beep. Okay, about a four and a half second delay. Now the question is, should I make myself louder or not? Now the question is, should I make myself louder or not? Um, I mean, I can do it on the speakers. Um, I mean, I can do it on the speakers. But do I want to make my overall volume louder? I mean, I can do it on the speakers. But do I want to make my overall volume louder? That was a pretty good echo there. Well, tell you what, if someone shows up in the uh, chat, we will ask them um, whether or not they think I should be louder. I, I, I'm sort of back to the setup I had before. For some reason yesterday, um, my audio changed from Pulse Audio to Elsa, but now it's changed back to Pulse. So, magic. Okay. So, let's... All right, so now that we've done the audio test, uh, I, I might actually do it every time from now on just to... Uh, just to annoy you, basically. Uh, we do need to R-sync stuff back, which we do have a, a plan for that, which we say here, uh, R-sync it back to, uh, to locally. Um, okay, good deal. Um, and last time we were editing it directly on the server, uh, because we uh, because we wanted to see the updates in real time, um, which I, I, I admit was a bad idea. We, we really shouldn't be doing that. Um, I think what we can do from here is um, uh, I'd like to test it locally without, and then you know after running some tests on it, push it back to the server uh, instead of trying to edit it on the server directly. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Um, 
I mean, certainly I can set a query string and all that good stuff. That's not the problem. By the way, let me go ahead and back this up because I, it's possible the version on the server was different. And if it is, I need to push the version on the server, uh, okay, um, to, uh, to, to GitHub. Because that's the version we're, we're tweaking with. Okay. Um, so, let's see. I'm trying to think of how we can do this and, and still have um, everything work. Now, one thing we could do is, instead of running the command locally, we could run the command using SSH. Uh, and then, you know, use the output of that. Uh, and then basically run run the program from the command line, or actually, I guess, the, uh, yeah, I guess we have to run it from the command line. Get it working like that, and then when that looks good, just push it over and and, and see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm, I'm hesitant. One problem we're going to have here is the BC API here is on a dr doesn't exist anymore, pretty much. Wow. Yeah, I basically just wrote onto a, a mount point, which I shouldn't have done. Um, because I, I don't think I'm going to mount today. That sounds dirty. Which is good. Because um, that really was just a test to make sure that... Um, let's see. There should be... There we go. Because uh, the mount points should be empty until you mount them, obviously. Um, there are ways around that, but we don't want to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and set it up so we can... A let's go ahead and use our local version of uh, BC API. Which apparently... I have no idea where the flick I put it. Well, actually, it might. I, it might have been in BC Get Astro. Hang on. Which is not a good place for it. Okay. So let me check in the README stream where I do put it. Um... Oh, wow. Home user Yamux server B API BC API. Uh. Well, it is running on the other server, so that's kind of correct. It's not running on BC Info 3, but that's also really ugly. Because um, it's no longer in my main Git. So, uh, which is kind of where I want it. So I actually created a, um, a README. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So this is bad. Um, let's see what we can do about this, though. Okay, so... Um, one thing that's going to be a problem if we move it here is it's no longer going to rsync by itself. It's we're going to have to force rsync it. That we can fix. Um, must be pushed manually for now, and that we can we can get around that. Um, okay. Um, I might mention. Well, we don't even need to mention that it originally was on Yamak or whatever. That's uh, that's probably not important because server. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, I guess I should probably be doing this from the other machine because this is a mount and that's slower and it might cause other problems um, that I don't want to deal with. So let me go ahead and um, I'm going to use git remove. Um, it is Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so I'm going to skip it. Um, I'm going to use git move, git remove to get rid of it. Oh, hang on. First, I probably should copy it over to, um, <laughs> copy it over to the other, to the place that I created for it on BC git. Okay. And that's not a git copy because it's two different gits and it's going to get confused. So now I can git remove it from here. Um... And I think, I don't even know if I need to get remove the directory. I don't think, um, I don't think Git actually knows about removing, um, oh. Uh, I don't think Git actually knows about directories. Uh, if a directory is empty, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. So now I need to go in, into BC Git and push this uh, to the correct, um, to the correct GitHub. And then I need to remove, and I am on another machine, you can't see what I'm doing. I should have like a little sign for that, maybe. I mean, I try to avoid doing it too much because I know 
it's not really useful for you not to see what I'm doing. Although you could argue that it's also not useful for you to see what I'm doing. But, you know, whatever. Okay, oh, come on, this is going to take forever, so I'll go ahead and start a different process for Yamakit, which will have a... Uh, there it is, beautiful. That was not too painful. Okay. Now, I just want to make sure I don't have anything in, in Emacs that is... Ooh, shiny. Okay, I don't have a API anywhere in Emacs, so this is going to be a fresh, clean copy. Okay, and then let's maybe write... Let's see. Um... Let's go ahead and run some, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see what I want to do here. Uh, yeah, and I do not necessarily want to make this um, a permanent thing, so I want to be careful here. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called run command. Uh, local for just this one, uh, this one Perl script. Um, local version of run command. Well, actually, it's cache command. Um, that lets me run commands on terramapadventure.com via SSH while testing. So we will basically just call this sub uh, cache command local I um do I even need that let's see uh, oh yeah I do because uh, so it's gonna be cache command has <coughs> let's see so the thing I need the two things I need are command and then options in fact I probably should look at the cache command that I wrote earlier. Uh, and the only difference here is we're going to run the command via uh, uh, via SSH, because we don't have the... Oh, we actually do have the program running here, don't we? Well, well, well. So, probably don't need this. Uh, I'll keep it there just because I want to, like, confusing myself. Okay, so we can actually run the command here, so that's actually kind of interesting. Um because we do have it here. Whoa. Oh, that's BC lib. Wait. Did I accidentally create cache command local in the wrong place? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go over here. Um, okay. Now, I don't want to put too many testing notes, uh, but I will put that to uh, for testing, set end, query string, whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and test. I don't think it's going to work, by the way. Um, um, I, I need to read. Okay, Perl fix, which is actually a terrible idea from here. Uh, it just basically makes all my Perl stuff executable. Um, and clearly, doing it from a mount is a bad idea. But it, anyway rehash because I'm using I'm actually in a directory that doesn't exist anymore. Ooh. That was interesting. Okay. So now I think no because API isn't in my uh, isn't in my path. So I do have to do this. Okay. One thing I noticed right away is I probably want to add a new line to this, which is fine. Um So we're, we're noticing some stuff um, that we're doing a lot. So well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get this working here the way we want, and then we will then we'll break it. All right. So doing this, and yeah, it's not great, but it works. Um, Okay, so now let's do a few things that we sort of clean this up a little bit. Um, sorry, every time I go to my other window to check something, I, re I just realized you guys get a uh, scre screen switch that you don't want. Um, I'd say I'd try to avoid it, but I'm not really going to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit here so we can have this. Um, 
Now we're noticing that basically that every single time we're going to put the query into the input um, and we're going to have this um, return and then print the result. So this is something we do for every function. Um, so let's see if we can do, uh, I know I can, I, I know we can do this, but um, um, in fact, we should be able to do, okay. Um, this part applies to all functions. So this is the part we don't have to, uh, uh, to do. The functions can use global variable for convenience. So in other words, I don't have to like pass in results because it's known to every function that result will contain uh, exactly what you expect it to contain. Um, in other words, it's the, it's the thing that you need to change before you return. Okay, so this would be, um, uh, it'll be this. Okay. And then, then you do the actual work by calling the function that you need, which will set result output, um, or will it? You know, we could actually just have it return a hash. Um, yeah, well, oh, I actually, actually think that's what it does right now. It returns a hash, right? It returns, uh, well, this one does. It does return a hash. Okay, fantastic. So, um, now I realize obviously this is the, this is specific to the time query, but we'll fix that. And then we just want to print the result uh, with new line because we are obnoxious. Okay, so the only thing this doesn't do is it doesn't check to see what function it is. Um, and I'm kind of wondering now, oh, I see, because we want, um, Yeah, if we were very, very clever, we could try to create my result and do result input equals string to hash. I don't think that'll work because this is a, uh, we need a pointer for that. I mean, it will, but we have to do more tweaking, um, which I suddenly, th you know, the moment I say it, it's like, okay, I'm going to do it now. Um, and I'll call this a note. The result will always contain a copy of the input. Oh, excuse me. That was probably pretty rude of me. Okay. Um, I think I have to do this. Um, and then... Now, the, the big thing is we have to figure out what function to call. And this is not difficult because it's just VC API, because that's the thing that keeps us safe, underscore... Um, Oh, that's why it's kind of weird. Result input F. Um, is that right? That actually is right, I think. All right, anyway. Let's make sure all that's working out, though, by debugging it, and we'll say die testing. All right, let's rock and roll. See what that, what that does. It'll probably break everything. Not a hash reference. Okay. Inline... 22. So, right here. Um, hmm, okay, so this is, doesn't think of this as a hash reference. All right, so at this point we should probably debug result and figure out what the hell that is before moving on. Okay. Uh, it's a scalar, okay. Um, okay, which is fine. And let's see what result input is. That that might be the, the bugaboo here. It might be the wrong thing. Okay. So result input... Okay. Alright, let's go ahead and do a var dump on it. I'm getting a little confused now. Scalar equals undef. Okay, maybe I tried to be too clever. Can we do this? This is going to do something, but it's, I don't think it's going to do the right thing. Um, 2 over 8 equals undef. Okay, so... 
result in so this thing returns a hash and I kind of want to set it to the to the return value of the hash um, and I kind of also want to think that maybe I'm being uh, too much of an a-hole here and I should have kept the query thing because let's face it yeah um, my query equals this and then we'll just result input equals query let's, I'm a little bit too crazy with this um, Okay, we get the query string. The result will always contain a copy of the input, so this is looking good now. Um, and now result should actually be, well, it'll be a hash, but it, it'll at least not be broken. And hash input will be a, uh, will be a hash. Unless I spec that up somehow. Uh, yep, because it's now going to be referenced as a variable. Okay, that's also a hash, which is good. And then f should be the function that we're calling. And we might just break it out just to make life easier. Yeah, there it is. Now we're getting, now we're cooking. All right. And we will do this in a, con we'll call this variable f. Uh, so that I think that's actually okay. All right, so now the function we're going to call is bcapi underscore f. Um, but the question is, how do we do that? Um, oh, I guess the function we're going to call is not this. It's actually uh, bcapi underscore this. So um, and there's a real clever way to do this, but the one thing I do need to check for is uh, whether the function exists. I'm not sure I want people calling functions that don't exist. May, might be harmless, uh, but it might be uh, harmful. So those are the two possibilities uh, by the binary theorem of having binaries. So in any case, we need to see if this function exists. I'm pretty sure I did this for the, um, for the other API. Uh, so let me take a quick look there, because that's the one that I used with a WebSocket. But even there, I'm pretty sure that um, um, I did. I did have a way of checking to see that. Um, I did have a way of checking to see that the function existed. So let's see. Okay, process message. So process message. If da 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 da, can the message be converted to JSON? One level of unfolding. Let's see. Convert the user's command to a function. Parse command. Okay. Build the eval string. Oh man, man. Okay, I haven't done it yet, but that is that's not looking good. Um about to eval. Oh, that does just do an eval. It doesn't check to see if the function exists. Wavy. Um So that's not good. Um Hmm, there is a way to check to see if a function exists. I'm going to go ahead and look for the word function and exist inside of everything that I'm doing here. Um, we'll first do it just for this. Okay, so there is apparently a way of doing this. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, here we are parse command. Now the problem is I might not have actually checked to see if it can be... Okay, so this is actually good. We could use command aliases if we wanted to. Um, there it is. If defined... Holy fuck. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is going to not work, and I'm doing it on purpose. Uh, because I'm not using the ampersand notation that Perl wants for functions. So this should not work. Which means a success is a failure here. 
Uh, not defined. Okay, good. Um, but if I put an ampersand in front of it, if you like, you put an ampersand in front of it. Uh, this should work. No. Okay, so how do I do that? Um, let's take a look at what I was just looking at then. Okay. Let's see what define does. Does that not actually? Oh, let's see. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. It has to be this sucker here. Now, the problem with this sucker here is I'm not going to be able to call it like this, I don't think. I might be able to. Let's see what this does. Oh, no. doesn't like it. It says it's not defined. Now, the question is, do I need to put quotation marks around it like I do here? Jesus Christ. Um... Going a little crazy here. No. So what's wrong? What am I doing here that I'm not doing in the other place? I should probably just bring this up and look at it directly in Emacs. Okay. Well, I'll command. If defined... Um, well, let's look at the let's look at the documentation for. Sorry, one two three defined. Um, um, so let's just go down. Okay, let's see. Um, can I want a function returns an un? Okay. Hey, wait a minute. I want to know if functions exist. Um. Ah, here it is. Okay. So let's let's just do this a little bit easier now. Because it could be that I need I need an eval to do even this. Um And this, by the way, I, I realize I'm actually printing the function. I'm not, um, I'm not checking to see if it's defined. But I'm kind of curious to see what this does. Oh, oh, sorry, BC API time. So that actually apparently calls the function, which is not good. Let's see what this does. Yeah, okay, that returns it. Okay, good. Um, so the problem here is this is a pure function. It's not the name of a function. Um, so I'm pretty sure this would not work. In fact, it won't even allow me to do it. Um, I don't think this is going to work, because th this is very... D oh, that does work. Um, well, let's just make sure it's working for the right reason. This should give me a zero. Oh, fuck, that worked too. Um, all right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two.
Okay, we are almost back. And we're back. So the problem right now is it's returning true for both functions that exist and don't exist. So let's do this. Actually, let's do that. And a function that definitely doesn't exist. And okay. That's a zero, but it's kind of hard to tell. Okay. No problem. So now what if I put this in quotation marks? Okay, so it does exist because, well, it's a string, so I guess it does exist. Um, that might be the problem, actually. Um, and I cannot do this. I'm pretty, yeah, that's not even a, a valid utterance in Perl. So the question is, I mean, I could do an eval defined whatever, but I should, should I have to do that? Um, let me go ahead and actually just load the damn thing that I'm trying to look at and copy, um, which I think is game lib. Um, okay. It might be that this isn't even working, so it's possible I'm looking at something that doesn't work. Um, oh, so this is what, okay, this, this I think I know, I figured this out now. So it's actually you have to do like that and see what that does. Well, that should still give me a one, but okay. Okay, good. Oh, give me a z right, 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 okay, so it's fine. And so now if I do this. Um, this should give me one and zero. Okay. So now we're cooking. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay. So my function doesn't need to be all this crap. My function, um, just needs to be the name of the function. So that's fine. So that's good. And then what we want to do here is we want to say if defined... I probably mean to say if not defined, don't I? But anyway, let's go with it. Oh. I need to get rid of this. We need to uh, comment that out. BCA. Okay, so I was actually doing the test backwards, too. Um, And we will go ahead and just do a die for right now, but then um, cleaner exit for functions that don't exist. Sorry, I avoid using apostrophes because it confuses Perl. So unless defined f, okay, so now let's see what this does. This should not die on us. Uh, f B C I time, okay. Now what if I were to change to a function that really doesn't exist. Now it will tell me. There we go. Very nice. Okay. So now uh, we just call it call f. Okay, hang on. Um, what function to call and if it exists and then call it. So now, in theory, I should just be able to do, and that should do it. Uh, now, the only issue here is I need the function now um, to actually change the uh, global results array, which I think I can do. Oh, actually, I don't, because all I need the function to do, oh, okay, so what I need to do here is result output equals a reference to the thing that it returns. Yeah, that's not confusing at all. Um, and then print the JSON. <laughs> that is the coolest thing, though. Three, if it works, this is going to be really cool, because it's basically three symbols in a row. Um, but let's see what happens. In ca oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, um... Do I want to do this? 
because I do need, I don't know if Perl actually even required, no, okay, cannot encode reference to scalar. <laughs> this, wow. All right, let's go a little, let's be a little bit nicer here. Um, all right. So let's debug, first of all, um, what happens if we just call dollar sign if, what do we get back? That might just be, okay, that's a hash, that's good. Now, how do we get a reference to that hash? Can we do this to get the reference to the hash? Mm. Can we get this to get a reference, which, which itself is a scalar, a ref. Okay, good deal. Um, something tells me that's not going to be what we want. Mm, it's a hash ref, but it's not a hash ref. Yeah, I said that. This is the reason I love Perl, by the way. If this works, or something, some variant of this works, it is just amazing how bad this code is. Oh, I guess I need to print JSON again. Alright, and it might complain that cannot encode reference to scale or ref. Okay, so that's not the way to do this. Um, result output... No, 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 no. Didn't mean to do that. Um, this definitely won't work. I say that and it'll work now. Okay, that's a reference to code, so that's not right. Um... And before you say it, I realize that I am focusing way too much on this problem. So this should be a hash ref, which maybe it is actually. Maybe I'm not. Uh so that should be a hash ref. Let's see if it is. Motherfuck. Oh. Hang on. Output. Eek. Did I screw that? Okay, so the output is not coming in correctly. The output is a hash. Um, so if I do this, it's definitely not going to work. That's a reference to code. Oh, and when I say that's definitely not going to work, I mean it's going to work. So, Jesus motherfucking Christ. Oh, okay, hang on. Maybe it's because BCI API is returning the wrong thing. It should be returning a hash, not a reference. Yeah, I said it. Not a reference to a hash. Oh, bad, 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 bad. Um, in fact, it does have to return a hash because... Uh, why? Because we don't want it necessarily manipulating that input hash. But let's... Okay, so instead of returning a reference to a hash... Oh, I, I, this is getting bizarre. Go ahead and return the hash itself, and then we will get to use our wonderful... Um, um, so this should not work now, because it's now returning a... Um, yeah, because now it's returning an actual hash, not a reference to a hash. Well, it's returning a list, actually. Um, so I think this is a re well, I think this is a reference to a hash. God, I didn't even think that would work. All right, and let me go ahead and push this to Git, because it's working, and it's just really ugly. Um, I mean, this is, this is the kind of code that makes people weep. And therefore, I must push it to Git. Okay. So the output result is whatever it sends back, to, the hash that it sends back to us, uh, a reference to that hash. And then all we need to do is print the result. And the rest of this bullshit is bullshit. Um, yeah, I think this is fine, actually. Okay, let's see if it... Oh. Okay, we still do need to properly document this. 
and I will go ahead and get rid of this useless function. So I'm going to test it once with the time. And actually, we don't even need a debug here. Um, yeah, looking good. And now we're going to set the string to something that doesn't exist. Good deal. And then we're going to use, we're eventually going to use something interesting. So now we're going to set it to the best time zone in the world, my time zone. Um, that didn't work. Is this? I mean, I could do uh, U.S. Denver, but that's not really what I mean. Okay. Oh, I know what's wrong. <laughs> because we now have... Um, uh, because now we have different... The variables are different here. So my hash, we do not get an input. We do not even, well, we do need a return value, so we need to do this. So it's not hash, um, it is, so where will we put all this crap? I think the only place we put it is result input. Is that a bad thing to do? Um, and I think we can, uh, yeah, can be used globally. Because the, the fact that we've kind of put it inside of something is kind of ugly. We, we don't want to necessarily make our make our uh, programs do all that work. So if query tz, um, then, oh, okay, and then we do add that to the error, but we don't necessarily do anything about it. Um, and then we set that to the query tz, and this is, by the way, this is a terrible way of doing this, so chop rent date return it okay so the idea here is we we use the query as a global variable to hold the uh, the crap so let's try this again uh, still not right okay let me try it with the the correct way of saying our time zone oh that worked why is there no US Denver it is 1243:46 here uh, is there no U.S. Denver? U.S.A. Denver? Hmm. That's another issue, by the way, that we should actually check to see the time zone exists. Uh, it doesn't hurt, or does it? Um. Okay probably doesn't hurt the fact that we don't have um, that we don't have the time zone if it doesn't exist it would be nice though I think it's user local share if we che checked uh, zones oh where are our zones user local they always move stuff around just to annoy me and literally that's why they do it I think it's user share zone actually you think that there's uh, other good reasons for it so what is what is the one for US Denver Oh, oh, U.S. Mountain? Okay, let me go ahead and do that one real quick. Um, all right. So that works. Um, okay, well, we think we can do this. This is not too bad. Um... Do we need, we probably don't even need a, a ret here. Um, in fact, we probably don't even need to return a value here. We can just say, modify the, um, no, I don't know if I want to modify a global array. Let's see. Um, um, Because that would save two steps here. It would just say modify the array, uh, the, the hash, and just fall off the end of the function. So let's call it something better than ret then, if we're going to do that. Um, we can't really call it return. 
Um, by the way, I know I'm saying mine, it's still global, but whatever. Um, the output, oh, we can call it output, of the function can be used globally. So now, we just do this, we just have this output that you can use. Input is equal to that. Um, result output is equal to, um, oh man, this is ugly. This is actually cleaner than what we had before. Let me go ahead and save this real quick before I, now this is going to be not as ugly as before. So I'm actually unhappy about that. But anyway, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say the output is basically um, whatever you changed it to. Um, so basically, the job of each function. Um, oh, we should just okay. Um, you see, API star functions is to change the output hash, not return anything. So that is, that's the kind of thing that I might regret. Um, so that does shorten the function because we don't have to worry about giving our own hash, we just, um, we can just do this. So let's see if this still works. Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, okay. So for calling BC API time, output should have changed. Um, so. Oh, I actually need to call the function, don't I? So I'm going to go over to the part where I actually call the function. Oh, right, because this was... Okay, hang on. Yeah, so we actually just need to do this. Um, and we are putting duplicate d documentation here saying we, we are aware that... Um, we are aware that the function, we're not using the return value, but that's okay because this is kind of like how uh, CSpice does things. Uh, it doesn't actually return anything, it returns void, but it changes the variables you send in. Um, in this case, we're changing the global variable. Very, very ugly, but it apparently works. Uh, okay. So now we can do a little bit better. Now, <laughs> we don't want to check if a file exists before we remove the invalid characters. Um, unless minus F user shares, I'm pretty sure this is universal for everything. Um, users, user shares zone info slash, and now we know it's quote unquote safe. Uh, query tz because we've we've sanitized it. Um, we can just do this. Now, in theory, we could just say if there's invalid characters in your time zone, we might not even want to bother to um, to continue. I mean, we, we you know if we're going to sanitize it. Uh, that's probably, um, okay, Pomodoro time back in two and two and I'll decide that.
Okay, we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually, um... Well, so then we don't need to actually... Well, okay. Okay, we'll allow that. Um... Time zone... Query TZ... Does not exist. And if that happens, we'll just return right away, because we don't want to do anything more with it. Um... I wonder if the date command can take a time zone as a as a as an argument. And I really don't know why oh. No, that's outputting it. Okay, so the correct way to specify the uh time zone uh is to uh is to set the T Z variable. Now the question is Why am I no, you know what? Screw it. I was gonna say you could maybe put that inside of the the command that you're running, but that just makes things worse. Okay. So now the question is why the hell why the hell is this there we go. Okay, let's see what happens now. Um nice. Time zone does not exist. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Alright, so now we need to get the, the, the reason we created this, which is not this, this function. Let me go ahead and save that real quick to get, because I'm paranoid. Um, by the way, let me make a note for a stream idea that's probably really bad. Um... There are question sites like Edibit where people ask fairly simple questions, um, and it might be fun one day to just sort of watch those, answer those questions as they come in to the extent that I can. Uh, you can do the same thing with Stack Exchange, but Stack Exchange questions are much, much harder, so we don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay, so now let's go over here. Don't need this. Um, in fact... At some point, we will probably want to remove the characters even before we convert it to a hash. Um, and honestly, I don't know if we want to remove them or just say if you have them, um, you get a very basic error message. All right, so I'll put it to do there. Do restrict which characters allowed in query string Return fixed error if bad. So, so this. So now here we are doing a little bit of other testing, but again, I th I don't think this is the right way to do it. Um. Um. If hash i matches at any point. Um, little tilde. I think I can do this, right? I always use maybe it's M. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is spaces, but th even that shouldn't really be um, output error dot equals. Um, all arguments to must be numeric, and then. We will just return. Okay. Okay, so now there's some other issues here. We need to actually do some defaulting. Um, mm, now we could over here check to see if we have any um, alt digits, but the problem is for minus u, that's optional, and I don't want to force people. Uh, to put in a uh, u, or I want to allow the concept of uh, non-mandatory arguments, uh, so I don't want to necessarily do that. Now I do have a defaults command that basically says if something is not defined, we can uh, we can define it. Um, and and the 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 output here is going to we need to do a little bit of work with it. 
So let's go ahead and say that's that's that. Um, all argument must be numeric. All arguments must be numeric. Okay, so let's take a quick look at my default uh, street because I think the default only works for glob ops, though. Unless I want to go even crazier and um, defaults. Um, in the glob ops hash, unless they've already been set. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so what this lets people do... Uh, hang on one second here. This, I think, is not the... The, the hash we're using is the query hash. Um, um, okay. Um, so the first thing we do is check for bad arguments now, and then we can do like a default kind of thing here. Um, this shouldn't be hard. But I probably could actually just um, rebuild the defaults, actually. Uh, am I being too crazy here? And I could use glob opts as my... And that would actually allow me to also use cooler command line stuff. Um, Oh, why am I thinking this is not a good idea? Well, I don't know why I'm thinking it, but... Um, I'm thinking it. Uh, let's see, so query is the sort of hash uh, output. Uh, so we definitely need to check query string now. Um, well, we do say it can be used globally, so let's go ahead and call this glob opts, which is an existing array. Okay, so glob opts, uh, so this, now you could call this function without having to change the end string. Uh, let, let me, let me make sure that I can actually do that. So this is the output. Um, Now glob opts. Um, wait, Should that that shouldn't be a result. Oh, okay, that just could be glob opts. That's what we want. Um, so I guess wherever you had result. No, sorry. Wherever we had query, we now want glob opts. Um, now, in theory, we could put here, um, but is not. We could even say dollars. Oh, I better be careful because this is Jason. Um, this is going to be a mistake. Um, yeah, this is, this is just going to be ugly. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. So let's go ahead and fix it in BC API time. Uh, so any place we have query, this is the only places we have it left, right? That's okay. There we go. And glob opts. And the whole reason to do this, we'll just see in a second here, is um, is so we can do defaults. Okay, so there's the query should not exist anywhere outside of a comment now, or in this. You know, as as that. Okay, so now we, we can use we're using glob opts. Let's see if things still work. Input tzf. That's not bad actually. Let me go ahead and save that before I decide to break it. Uh, 
Okay, so now the theory is we should be able to call this not only like this, but also as, um... What would happen if you had an empty query string? Now that'll break things. Oh yeah, because the function's not defined. So now in theory we should also be able to do this. Um, but that didn't work. Oh, fudge, because we redefine globops here. Um, well, the really cool thing is we have to just do defaults end query string, because the query string itself um, is what, you know, and that means the globops will overwrite it. That is too damn cool. Um, okay, so now, um, not fucking bad. Um, so in theory, I could say the query string is this not give this a time zone and still get the right result because it's set in the query string. But if I want to, um, if I want to, I can override it from the command line. So this is actually not bad. Okay. Um, um, Blob opts can be overridden. Um, query string can be overwritten. I, I wish I could type. Can be overwritten by options by command line options by options in the command line version. Uh, so if you're in the command line version. Uh, you can you can get you can um, override it, but you don't have to because the query string will take care of that. So this is looking pretty good. Um, okay. So do we want? We still need to do this, right? Um, yeah. And if that works, then we can just do defaults. Um, if you haven't defined stuff. Um, Ah, let's see, the moon's terminator, I guess, and t equals, I really, really don't want t equals to be, well, shit, that actually wouldn't be a bad idea, though, would it? Um, I think that's the way to do that. I might regret that decision. And n equals 100 and u equals 0, because that is the correct. Okay. Uh, now, right now, it doesn't actually set a hash, but that's fine, because we're just testing. Um, you know, in theory, uh, f equals terminator think. Oh, wow. Um, oh, shit. Accept death. Okay, so... So th there's two ways to handle this. One is we could remove the function uh, before we send it to the, the, the function that gets called, but I get the feeling, uh, okay, let's do that and then let's pretend, let's worry about it. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, now that we know the function, remove it from hash to do bad idea. Uh, so it won't confuse called function. In other words, that is a weird set. So we'll just say delete globops f. That should fuck things up nicely. Oh, wow. Oh. Hmm. That is not the frame of the moon. So let's see what the hell we're calling, actually. I think maybe that's... Oh, I think maybe I didn't do this with globops. Okay. I did not. So this would actually be globops, and maybe we can shorten globops. Um, just alias it so we have... Um, we can use it as a shorter... We don't have to type in glob ops every time. Okay. All right, and right now we're not we're in intentionally uh, not converting this to um, uh, to uh, JSON format or to hash format. Um, and I guess we don't necessarily need the program to return the values that it got. Um, wait, why penumbral? Oh, no, I'm sorry. The default should be u equals 1, umbral. And should the... I don't want to make the default earth, because literally that's the one case where we, we're going to break things. Um, in fact... I don't know if I want to make this a warning. Um, it's not really... Well, it is an error. I mean... Refraction not computed uh, results may be especially inaccurate for Earth. That's a terrible thing to say. Um, okay, so now we should get the same thing, but this time umbral. There we go. Um, and I just really, really want to see it for Earth anyway. Oh, right, we're not actually getting the, um, okay. So right now, the umbral terminator of the Earth, at my latitude, is approximately minus 14 degrees, so about 14 degrees west of the equator. It is Pomodoro time, but I have been going for, ew, just over an hour, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to call it in just a minute, so we're not going to Pomodoro now. Um, I feel kind of wimpy about that. So is this even roughly true that the um, Terminator at my... Well, yeah, that looks about right. Because that's the moon right there. Um, did I say that's the moon right That's the prime meridian right there. So this, this looks tolerably okay. Um, by the way, one other thing we need to do, and I'll put it on the stream to do... Um, compute twilight refraction, etc. Uh, we can actually do a better job than just using the terminator function that they gave us uh, by looking at each latitude, looking for the point where the sun is rising or setting. And we can actually use the um, we can actually use the correct values for sunrise and sunset, which is uh, 34 minutes of arc refraction at at the horizon so thank you for watching the stream i hope to be back later today uh but goodbye for now